Let me start recording before you spit your controversy, Mixo. Go ahead. Say what's on your mind, man. Or do you mean you're gonna spit some controversy while we do the tier list? Cause that, you know, this whole video is gonna be pretty controversial, I think. I should probably say, while Mixo types out his controversial statements, thank you all so much for being here. This is my um, album of the year tier list. You're waiting for the tier list? Okay. Album of the year tier list. Normally I do these videos and I just give you guys my top 10. I figured this year I have a couple other tier list videos in the works that are gonna be dropping on YouTube as well, but I've been doing a lot of these tier lists on stream and I figured it would be a cool way for me to uh, not have to put together a top 10, but instead individually rank all of the albums that I reacted to or did a video for this year. So we're looking at like over 20 albums or something, and we're just gonna put them all in the tier list. I'm gonna show you guys the actual format that I made uh, real soon on screen. We're gonna rank all of the albums, and uh, at the end, I will give you guys what my album of the year is. Keeping in mind, this tier list is my personal tier list. I'm gonna do one where I hop in the Discord call with a bunch of you guys who are in the Discord and we put together the Discord's album of the year tier list. This one is my personal one. It's gonna be my takes. It's gonna be what is catchier and more replayable to me. It's all just an opinion. I would love to hear yours in the comment section. Uh, and as, of course, all of your controversial statements in the chat, please hit me with them. Just keep that in mind that at the end of the day, I'm not being objective. That's not my goal here. I'm just gonna put together the albums that I really enjoyed versus the albums that I enjoyed a little less. Uh, and hopefully it's a lot of fun. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's jump into it. Let me put the, the tier list up on screen. These are the albums that I have reacted to or done a video for this year, not including the up and coming artist reactions, uh, the more mainstream ones, or the ones that are a little more known, the artists who have a, a larger following. Uh, these are all in random order. We're gonna go in order of appearance. Uh, and as you can see, the tiers are, S tier is all the albums I think are tens. A tier is all the albums that are from seven through nine. B is from four to six. B is mid tier. All the albums that are mid are okay. C are the albums that I find pretty underwhelming, one to three. I was disappointed in them. D are the albums I'll never come back to. They're zeros in my opinion. I don't know that we have any albums that will fall in this one, but if we do, that's where they'll be. And then since you know each tier involves three number ratings, just so that we don't have a bunch of tiers, the highest rated albums in a tier will be to the left and the lower rated ones will be towards the right. So it'll be, you know, the best album I think of the year will be number one spot in S tier. And from there, it will be descending all the way down through zero. Chat, feel free to always give your opinions. Feel free to, you know, say what's on your mind. It'd be, it'd be funny if like the albums that I think are the worst ones to drop this year go into the hopper for future Make Me Hate It episodes where I have to listen to them all the way through and, and re get reset a bunch of times. That'd be pretty funny. Honestly, Nevermind came out. I listened to it for a week, week and a half before I had to move on to other albums. Um, I at first thought it was a seven. I think maybe it's a six, six and a half. Although here, you know, we're talking whole number ratings. Only one song is good is a crazy take, but it's definitely not A tier. It's, it's, it's a little mid, it's just some chill background music. That's really all that I see it as. There are a couple songs that I would come back to. For the most part, it's not tremendous or anything. It's, it's also not trash in my opinion. So I'm gonna put it in B tier. Like I said, six, six and a half. I think honestly, never mind. Right there is pretty, pretty, uh, pretty fair. Oh, let me actually pull up Spotify as well, just in case I need a quick refresher on what the albums sound like. The production carries though, yes, absolutely. I remember being pleasantly surprised by Gunna's album, DS Forever. I like Sticky and Massive, everything else is meh. Well, actually that'd be cool too, to pull up every album's track list and kind of find out you know, the ones that I really enjoy, uh, what songs I, I, I like to listen to. If you wanna listen to mall music, then this is for you. That is kind of true. That is kind of true. Mall music is, is actually a good way to put it. Um, although Text Go Green probably is the best song on the album. Um, Sticky is good. Massive is good. I like Flights Booked. I like Tie That Binds. Liability is cool and Jimmy Cooks. So it's like, you know, that's, I would say since it's just 14 songs, I pr I'd say that's like half the album that I actually enjoy enough to, to come back to, but still if it's half the album, that's pretty mid. Gunna was very pleasantly surprising. I was very worried going into the video that it, that it had a, a lot of songs on it and I was worried it would feel repetitive and kind of boring, um, but it wasn't, it was surprising. It was surprising. There were a lot of bangers, a lot of really great features. Um, I'm thinking Gunna at least a seven, absolutely. It's A tier. 
It was very pleasantly surprising, so it was a really fun first listen. Uh, and Gunn is just smooth with it, you know, he's, he's too nice with it. Uh, it's always a lot of fun playing his music on, you know, speakers or headphones that have that nice bass to it. He's just sliding all over the place on this one. It's a lot of fun to listen to, it's, uh, it's a blast. I think it's at least a seven, so A tier for sure. Definitely not deserving of being in the same tier as Honestly Nevermind. I think I'm pretty comfortable with this. Push and P. Push and P is, honestly, although I, I, I don't think the song is um, all that, the memes that came from it, the fact that everyone says P, um, you know, all of that, it was just too impactful to, to ignore for sure. Gunna is A tier, the songs are catchy and replayable. Mop is my shit. Yeah, absolutely. Gunna is, Gunna is A tier for sure. This is, hold on, this one is actually, uh, this, this fucks me up a little bit because he dropped the album in 2021, but then he dropped uh, an updated version of the album in 2022. And I get their names mixed up every now and then. Yeah, no, this project is absolutely, uh, absolutely either A or S tier. Um, I just, I wanna make sure I get the name right. It's offline, that's what it is. Okay, it was under singles and EPs, not under albums. Yeah, so offline EP by JPEG Mafia. All of these are tough and fantastic additions to LP as well. LP had songs like Rebound, which is one of my favorite JPEG Mafia songs ever too. So similar vibes to to those, you know, tracks offline, just a really solid EP, really Look solid addition. Handsome. Really solid addition to uh, JPEG Mafia's awesome album, LP. I'm thinking A tier for now. Uh, better, if Gun is an, a seven though, I think, Offline is is higher than that. If Gun is a seven or an eight, I think Offline is is a little better. I would rather listen to Offline, but Gun is good. This is a ten. Sophie Tucker, Wet Tennis. It's a ten. I gave it a ten on my first listen. I insist that it's still a ten on re-listens. This is how you do a dance album. This is how you do you know a summertime fun pop album. It's versatile. It's got. Really cool, a really cool What a Wonderful world, world cover on there. The production is incredible. I highly suggest that everyone go and listen to this. Uh, even Vlarity, who is our resident hater in the chat, she was flipping out over this record when we were listening to it on stream. It's a lot of fun. Definitely check it out and check out my video for it. It's a 10. It was my album of the year for a, a couple months. Definitely deserving of that. S tier album. You should all go check it out for sure. Forgive Me is to this day in my heavy rotation. Uh, Age Sex Location by Ari Lennox. This one was smooth. I didn't do a reaction for this one. I heard this one on my own time, but I did a quick, you know, mention. 10 out of 10 seal of approval, absolutely. Uh, I did a quick mention of it in a video because I thought that it was deserving of at least that. It, it's, it's Ari Lennox, just so talented. You know, great R&B voice, really talented at writing the songs. The production value is just really, really high. She's, she's nice with it, she's nice with it. She's smooth. Definitely check this out if you're into some of those slower, more romantic vibes. You gotta check this out. That's definitely for you. Uh, an extremely valuable member of, of um, Dreamville, I think. I mean, she's, what she can bring to a track with some of the other more talented, you know, rappers, the, the, what she can do on a hook, what she can bring to the table in terms of her songwriting, it's, it's a really good album. But it's also, to me, less replayable than Gunna. I'm more, I find myself in the mood to listen to more energetic music more often than I go for the slower stuff. So it's, it's beneath Gunna only in terms of replayability for me though. Not in terms of me trying to be objective and, and qualifying it or anything like that. This is where this lands. Very good though, very, very good. I know a lot of people will say easy S or A tier, but for you it's a solid B. Mr. Morale, there, there's I think the first kind of hot take for it. Um, I think giving Mr. Morale anything less than a seven is, is well, I just, I disagree with that. I think that it's, it's if, if we're gonna talk about Mr. Morale, I, I, would, I would agree with anybody who gives it a seven or above. Was it his best album? No. I think in terms of the honesty, the, the lyrical ability, the songwriting, the production, the storytelling, like it's still, it's, it's an eight tier album. I'm trying to decide whether to put it, uh, well, actually, yeah, it's, it's A tier. For me personally, it's it's very, very high quality. It's, to me, it's an eight and it's above Gunna. One of the better rap albums that came out this year. I don't think it's the rap album of the year, but it's a really good album. This year was great for music, by the way. I'm thinking A tier is gonna be packed with albums. It lacks replayability, especially songs like Mother Eye Sober and Auntie Diaries. Yeah, I, I guess subjectively, a lot of people really do find the heavier, more hard on the sleeve tracks replayable. They really come back to those. Personally, I don't come back to really heavy subject matter extremely often um, as much as I appreciate it 
tremendously, and I think the songwriting is, is really, really impressive. Uh, it's Again, it's heavy, it's heavy, so I, I don't listen to it as, free, as frequently. Um, so I'm actually thinking of doing this for the same reasons that Ari Lennox is beneath Gunna. I just found Gunna more replayable in terms of, um, it's easier to put on in my daily rotation, whereas a lot of the subject matter Kendrick touches on is, is a little too heavy for, you know, the casual everyday listen. It's really an album that if I want, I, I would like to sit down and experience all the way through every time I hear it. Um, you know, I'm coming back to tracks like N95 pretty frequently, but those are the easier ones. Those are the, the more mainstream, you know, replayable ones. Um, yeah, it's it's a really special album. It's more of an experience, I think. It's not it's not as easily it's not as you know easily replayable as some of the Gunna tracks. Uh, for me personally, because it's a little heavy. We cry together is my least favorite song. I'm like, why why do I want to hear two people argue for like three to five minutes? Yeah, that one can trigger some people's you know PTSD if they grew up in a troublesome household. And 95 Silent Hill Savior are the only tracks you like. They're not the only tracks I like, but they are some of the ones that are easier to come back to just because, you know, they, they sound a little more mainstream, they sound a little more radio friendly, they're, they're you know, they're the, the stuff that most people listen to in their casual listens. Benjamin Clementine, I actually forget the name of this album. And I Have Been. I was thinking of the Wise Blood album, which also starts with and, so I was getting fucked up on the titles. And I Have Been by Benjamin Clementine. I remember this one being really smooth. I did listen to it recently. I remember really enjoying tracks like Love Luster Man. We can... Just a really classic vibe, you know, a really vintage sort of warm vocals, big band vibe almost uh, at some points. Just the orchestral arrangements. I mean, this is a really grandiose undertaking by Benjamin Clementine. I had a lot of fun listening to this one. Yeah, this is the one that I said sounded like it was straight out of uh, uh, Matilda. This album is really good. That's also A tier. It's also A tier. It's uh, it's very pleasant. Uh, it's a really warm listen. I highly recommend that you guys go check that out as well. I think it kind of flew under most people's radars. Um, you know, not a whole lot of people watch my video for it, and I, I understand that because, like I said, the album isn't super well known. Um, but you you know you should really check that out. That's that's a, a really good album. Father Time is the track that balances heavy subject matter and enjoyable production and vocal performances, especially from Samfa. Wish more of the deep cuts were like that. Exactly. Uh, I'm thinking this falls here. As much as I like it, I would listen to the Ari Lennox album um, more frequently than this. This feels like a really folky kind of fun campfire you know album at some points, and I really really like it. But I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit of a casual when it comes to music sometimes. In my, in my, in my personal, like, free time when I'm listening to music, I, liked, I like the easier stuff. I like the easier stuff. The really deep, introspective stuff normally falls a little bit by the wayside for me. And this one just feels, at, at some points, a little somber, a little melancholy. A very spiritual sounding album. I think I remember saying that about this too. Uh, this one and The Wise Blood, I think. Um, so it's, I, I feel like this one is more for specific moments. I wouldn't come back to this and just put it on while I'm driving to work or something like that. You know what I mean? While I'm riding the bus. This, I feel like, is one of those albums that you have to sit down and experience. Uh, and for that, you know, I don't have the time to do that every day, so that makes it less replayable than some of these. Absolutely A tier. It could not be lower than this under no circumstances. Melt My Eyes, easy S tier for you. Melt My Eyes, 9 out of 10 for you because it felt like some of the songs were a little short. On the Benjamin Clementine, I agree. Melt My Eyes is a S tier for you. I don't remember exactly what I gave Melt My Eyes, although I loved it. I remember expecting some hype Denzel Curry shit and, uh, and being surprised that it was a little bit more of a, a mellow vibe. Once I got over that, I think that it is... I don't know that it's a 10, but I do want to put it here for now. We'll put it here and then we'll come back to it for now. Top spot in A tier, absolutely. I'm okay with leaving it here because I know we have a couple other tens that I'm gonna put up here and I want to see how it feels When I look at the tier list if it feels like this is wrong right now. This feels right. It's also a giant, you know, never mind This is easily C tier for me personally her loss to me was extremely uninspired just worse than mid I really disappointed by it. I thought that it was gonna feel more like a collaboration between Drake and 21, and it really just felt like a Drake album that 21 was on every now and then to save Drake whenever Drake went a little too, you know, far over the cringe deep end, you know what I mean? I think the best thing to come out of her loss were the um, sassy Drake memes, and also the production really does its thing. I would rather listen to Honestly Nevermind over her loss. 
I was just really disappointed by it. It was just super underwhelming. Really just, um, to me personally as a Drake fan, just, just putting that stamp on, on the fact that Drake is in rapid decline. I think her loss really deserves to be where it's at. It's just not a zero because I had a good time laughing at the memes and uh, I am not opposed to ever coming back to it and giving it another try. I don't find myself opposed to, to ever listening to it again, so I'll leave it there at C. Her loss doesn't even feel like a collab album, unlike What a Time to Be Alive. There is no chemistry or real collaborative effort between the two. I do think it's B though. If it does wind up in, in the B tier at the end of the stream, or at the end of the video, uh, it'll definitely be because it's a four, not because it's a six. No, but for now, I'm thinking three. That's why I put it in C. Rich Flex, Middle of the Ocean, Hours in Silence, More M's are great, everything else is meh. I think the best song is Major Distribution. Really not much to come back to, I think. That I can't find on other Drake albums, uh, you know, done much better. Montel Fish. I'm gonna be honest, uh, I don't really remember what this sounds like. No, 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 no. Uh, oh yeah, no, the, the, the Daft Punk sample, the way that they use that Daft Punk sample was so ridiculous. Yeah, I don't think it's coming up to a B. I remember what Jamie sounded like, sorry. It's cause I heard, I've done, I've done, you know, 10 videos in the last week and a half, so. Jamie, really smooth. Montel Fish, I, I remember being really interested in him because Mixo donates and, uh, and bumps his songs to the top of the queue every now and then. Um, and I always found them really interesting, just soulful, charismatic performances, great vibes, great energy. Not necessarily R&B like Ari Lennox, but still chill kind of warm vibes, you know, like Benjamin Clementine. I'm thinking, I'm thinking this and Jamie are actually kind of similar. I'm coming back to Montel Fish more though, more often I think. Um, but these are actually pretty similar albums in terms of how they made me feel when I first heard them. Just really chill, very laid back, very emotional albums. Very, very nicely done. Personal S tier for you. Came out at a time when you were going through some personal shit, very great acoustic vibes. Yeah, the nostalgia can absolutely, you know, boost it up to S. Um, and it definitely hits different if you're feeling something, if you're going through something. Jamie by Montel Fish, you should definitely check it out. And apparently he's actually dropped another album this year uh, following Jamie that I have not gotten a chance to listen to yet. But I'm thinking that if that's around the similar quality um, or even better, Montel Fish might be someone to keep an eye out for. So definitely check out that album for sure. Uh, this one is No Stylist. No Stylist by Destroy Lonely. I remember doing the Destroy Lonely video and really just feeling bored, you know? Just feeling like he really wasn't offering me anything different that I couldn't get anywhere else. I mean, I, I remember a lot of people asking me to listen to it, saying he experimented and added some guitars to this shit, but at the end of the day, it really was not up to the standards of what some other, other people on his label are doing. Um, you want to talk experimental, you know, talk about whole lot of red. Destroy Lonely didn't really do anything all that impressive. Uh, no Stylist to me. I would come back to Honestly Nevermind before I came back to No Stylist. I don't know whether it's here or here just yet. I'm thinking it's here actually. I want to say, because it's not mid, I think it's slightly below it, but I do think Destroy Lonely has the potential to be much, much better. I'm okay with giving it a four. I think this is one of the videos that hasn't come out yet because of the, the strike that I got on YouTube. It's out on the Patreon right now. By the time you're watching this, it'll probably be out on YouTube already. And you can, you'll, you'll, if you've seen it, you'll know how underwhelmed and disappointed by this album I was. I'll come back to songs like The Ending. Yeah, The Ending, Brockhampton, uh, and Big Pussy are my favorites off of this. All the rest, all the rest is pretty unnecessary. I was very disappointed by it. And as an album, as an album, I really can't see myself ever returning to it. At least the production and mixing is done right on her loss. That's a good point. I forgot to take production into account. I took into account uh, Destroy Lonely's uh, potential and I forgot to take into account the production. That's actually a great point, Mixo. I mean, I'm not really coming back to either of these albums either way. Yeah, and, and, and I'm also not coming back to uh, The Family as an album. I'll come back to those three songs I mentioned, but it's, it's better than the other two that are in this tier, but I'm definitely not coming back to it as an album. Some of you guys might be flipping out right now if you're watching this on YouTube, but I was just, I was really, really disappointed by the family. I don't think Dustin would put both in S tier. I think he might put them in A tier as nines. I remember him saying, I, even he said that the albums were, uh, had to grow on him, that he didn't love them first listen. Don FM though, the only reason Don FM isn't a 10 
is because I don't like the Lil Wayne track. That's the only reason Don FM isn't a 10. It was my album of the year for the longest time. I really want to put it in S tier, but I can't say it's perfect and dislike one of the features on it because that's not perfect. You know what I mean? But it is, it's like a 9.9. .9. The Lil Wayne feature, I had to mention it because it's the only thing I don't like about the album, you know? Beyond that, the album is a 10. You just ignore it. Yeah. Should I do like nine? Should I do, should I change S tier to 9.5 to 10 so that I can include Don FM in, in S tier? <laughs> Why is LP on this? That's offline. Offline is an EP that dropped this year. LP dropped in 2021. Wasteland, I remember giving it an eight. I'm still confident in that rating. Um, I mean, Brent Fayez really did his thing. The interludes really feel like a movie. You know, the sound design and the way that he was able to tell the story uh, visually, but only, only, you know, by you hearing it was very, very impressive. Smooth as always. He did have the really creepy ASMR interlude where the woman had, was doing like kiss sounds and mouth sounds. Uh, and that was a little awkward, but I get it. I get what he was going for. I mean, it's, it's, it's the, the back of the limo scene in the story that he's telling. I don't think it's anywhere near mid. It's absolutely better than that. I would actually put it here. I think that's good. It's, I think it's an eight, which makes it exactly middle of the road between seven and nine, and it's in the middle of the road in this tier. So yeah, I think that's, I think that's a great place to put it. Back when Lil Wayne didn't look like a gremlin on crack. What? <laughs> Metro, uh, same situation as Don FM. The only thing I dislike about Metro's album is the Rocky feature. It's the only thing stopping it from being a 10. But this feels crazy. Okay, that feels better. Looking at that felt wrong. This feels good. These three albums are like nine and a half and above. Best trap album of the year? Yes, absolutely. It's not album of the year. No, no, it isn't. It isn't. It's been on a loop for me since it dropped. It really has. But uh, the Rocky feature makes it imperfect. Uh, if we're talking, because it is a rap album at the end of the day, Dental Curry's rap album is better and Don FM is better than both of them. But this top three right here for the A tier, I'm, I'm very, very confident in. Man, this Kendrick sitting here doesn't feel right. I'm gonna put it there. See, because it's something like, I try to justify it when I'm building out the tier list, but every now and then I just look at it and it looks wrong. It looks wrong. So I move some things around till it feels right. Because to me, looking at this tier list and having it feel right, is uh is also a very important step in in the process of figuring out you know what albums i like more than the other this this feels right moving kendrick up there that feels right benjamin clementine had some really great orchestral elements in his music that i personally adore uh i find it you know super appealing and so i uh i think i think i'm moving that one up benjamin clementine I'm a sucker for strings for horns for any orchestral shit and, and benjamin clementine made great use of it so this is feeling right. And even the color palettes kind of match up. Blue, blue, a little bit of white here. These brown color palettes here, this gray shit right here. Some really colorful, vibrant shit towards the end. Yeah, I like this. Uh, Yeet. I mean, honestly, it's mid. It's cool, it's psychedelic, yeah. That's a great way to put it, psychedelic synth trap. But production carried. I like it for being energetic, which is why I'll put it above, honestly, never mind. But really, uh, it's it's nothing that I wasn't expecting already from Yeet. He didn't really take too many risks. Didn't stray too far outside of his comfort zone. Didn't do anything that he hadn't done a thousand times before. It's energetic. It's what I was expecting from him. So I wasn't, I can't say I was disappointed in it. It's really not great. And definitely not deserving of being among these albums right here. 070 Shake dropped uh, an interesting album. It's a lie. It was actually, it got, uh, it got a little boring, but it might have been the situation I was in when I was listening to it. Um, I was, I had heard some singles by 070 Shake that were really cool, interesting, energetic, some interesting drums. And uh, a lot of the times it felt like the songs on this album, You Can't Kill Me, didn't really lead to anything. It felt like they were building up to something and never getting that actual climactic, triumphant moment that I was really, you know, yearning for on the album. There are some standout tracks. I should probably name them. Skin and Bones is dope. Cocoon is crazy. I really like Body. I think that's my top three. But for the most part, felt like a lot of great ideas that didn't really culminate or, you know, really show off her full potential in the way that some of the songs off of Moda's Vivendi did. It's A tier. I agree. I think I gave it a seven the first time I heard it. It really isn't mid, but it was, it was disappointing for 070 Shake. I'm gonna leave it right here at the bottom of A tier. I'm confident in that. 
I do wish it could have been, you know, up here among the Kendricks and the JPEG Mafias because she has all of the potential to be up there, you know, and she just kind of fell short a little bit. Post Malone album is forgettable and half-assed. Post Malone bottom of C. It is half-assed. It is forgettable. But C is really for the albums I'm, mm, I don't know. I, I don't, it feels, it's just one of those things, like I said, when I look at it and it feels wrong, I know that it's forgettable. I know that it's half-assed. I know that it's not, nowhere near his best, but it still doesn't feel right sitting there. I'm thinking here. It doesn't feel right seeing it in the same category as her loss and the family and no stylist. I'm thinking bottom of B and we'll see how it feels once we have all the other albums in here and we'll rearrange it. Post Malone trying to recreate circles a bunch of times. No, it is, it is extremely uninspired and it feels like it's not the album he wanted to make at all. I actually forget the name of the album. What is it? 12 Karat Toothache. Jid, however, the forever story. This was my album of the year for a long time as well. The versatility, the flows, the display of lyricism and drive and hunger for somebody who's, you know, already seen as maybe one of the best, the most talented rappers. Still chasing after it, still getting it. I'm so glad he was able to include 2007 at the end of the track list, put it out on streaming services. W for the cover art, great features. He was singing, he was rapping. This is an S tier album. Yeah, that feels right. No misses. No misses, and I think it was actually, it overtook Wet Tennis as my album of the year when I first heard it. The Forever Story is um, tremendous. There's, n yeah, there's no, no complaints on my part in terms of the Forever Story. Jid, just special. He's just special. Flume dropped an album this year, huh? I'm a huge fan of Flume's experimental production. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of his flair, his style. The production feels colorful, as colorful as this album cover is. Just one of my favorite producers out right now. Extremely versatile, very talented. I need a Flume and JPEG Mafia collab because uh, how relationships are made or how relationships are built or that track that they have together is still in my heavy rotation playlist. Flume is A tier. You know, as a producer, it's really, really fun to pick it apart. Really fun to try and figure out how in the hell he made these sounds, how in the hell he designed these sounds, you know? How he gets his drums to sound that way, how he how he plays the, the instruments this way. How does he get the mix this tight, this clean? I'm thinking, Bear with me. That's where I'm thinking that goes. Between an A and B tier for you. I don't think that it's better than High This Is Flume. High This Is Flume is S. High, High This Is Flume is 10. But Palaces, I like where it's at. Mm, no. Kendrick, man. Feels wrong seeing Kendrick there. Palaces, there we go. His Coachella set was crazy this year. Yeah, Flume's nice with it, man. I Never Liked You by Future. I'm gonna be honest. Aside from the hits, kind of forgettable. I know that a lot of people really liked it. I think I preferred High Off Life. Future can be a little hit or miss for me. Now, no, normally it's it's hits, normally it's bangers. Listening to a full future, future project though, it's gotta be really, really, it's gotta be special for, for it to, you know, be memorable for me. And High Off Life was uh, just that. High Off Life grew on me tremendously. I mean, High Off Life aged so well. And I don't think this was that. I'm thinking a six is pretty fair for this one. It's top of B tier for now. It was a little forgettable, yeah. I, I honestly, aside from the hits, I forget a lot of the songs on there. And don't get me wrong, the songs that are good off of this, are really fucking good. For a Nuts Crazy, Puffin' on Zooties is awesome. Wait For You, overplayed, but great. Uh, oh, the, I, I remember liking was it the Kodak feature? Yeah, I'm having trouble remembering a lot of what these sound like. I really am having trouble. Not even joking. I think after I think after Wait For You, the features are the standouts. I might have to re-listen to it. But for now, six. I might come back to it later and give it a seven. Well, but the, the highs are so high though. You know, the highs are high enough for me to want to see it around Gunna. But as an album, I guess I got to treat it as a, as a collective, right? So. Cause it's got, you know, Puffin' on Zooties is A, A tier, hell S tier. But as an album, I'm thinking, I'm gonna leave it here for now and I'll, I'll see how I feel about it. For now, I, I kind of want to move on to the Pusha T because a lot of people were saying Pusha T had the rap album of the year. I don't think Pusha T dropped anything better than Jid. I don't think it's better than Denzel Curry. I don't think Pusha T was better than JPEG Mafia. I don't think Pusha T was better than Kendrick. I would rather listen to Flume for the production. I would rather listen to Gunna for the hits. I'm thinking this is, this is where it lands. It's not Daytona. The production carries on this album, I think. Pusha T really does what he always does. It's a similar delivery and a similar swagger, a similar charisma performance to what we've grown to expect from him. Uh, and so it really just feels like it his songs hit harder when they're over better beats because his performance is pretty consistent all the way through. I do think it's an eight. 
mix a oh no god uh, eight out of ten for me solid album it is solid daytona s tier it's almost dry a little bit of a disappointment after daytona still very good still very solid pusha t still a great rapper but the beats are what determine whether or not a pusha t song is great for me because like i said pusha t's performance is basically consistent throughout his his um his tracks that said, there was that one song on It's Almost Dry where his performance was like super evil and, and, and gritty and, and it almost sounded like he was, you know, really ready to kill somebody. Um, that was awesome. More of that from Pusha T. I'd love to see it. It's Almost Dry, 8 out of 10. I'd rather listen to Gunna, DS Forever. Like I said though, Daytona, S tier. Uh, oh man, what is this? Demons Protected by Angels? Is that the name of the album? It's Nav. Nav was really, really surprising to me. I was expecting worse. And uh, he actually blew me away with how catchy some of these songs were, how great the production was on some of them. I didn't even listen to this, the new Nav album, so I, oh, I didn't even listen to the new, new Nav album, so I have no opinion on it. Let me show you a couple of the songs on it, just to give you a glimpse of uh, just the fact that it's better than what I was expecting, which is really what is carrying, you know, this album for me, is just that my expectations were low, and it um, surpassed my expectations. It exceeded my expectations. Can't let what someone say about me make me now. He, I wonder why they hate me now. Some real honest lyrics. Caught me by surprise. I really, I was singing this around the house, man. It, it, it's, it'll get stuck in your head. Uh, listen to this. That boy, he still cut a headshot. Broke his shoe from down the street. Hit him with that leg lock, yeah. They actually have some chemistry, bro. They really killed that one. Uh, Little Baby featuring Travis Scott. This one goes hard, too. Take you Beat selection was tremendous, bro. The best thing about this was the first time I heard it, I uh, I wasn't looking at the track list. I was just washing dishes. When I heard Travis, you know, I didn't see any of the features. When I heard Travis, I went crazy. And then Nav kind of kills it. And when I heard Lil Baby, I went I went crazy, bro. I went crazy. It's crazy. It's, it's you know, and he really does go on a four track run here at the start. Last of the Mohicans is good. I want you to hear the Don Tolliver though. I mean, this is. You wanna fuck in the car? I show you just who you are. Bro, it's, it's really cool vibes on here, man. Even the Bryson Tiller feature. And I haven't heard Bryson Tiller sound that good in a minute too. It's a good album. It's seven and a half. It's good. It's good. Gave me a lot of whole, a lot of new respect for Nav, man. Nav's production is so wavy. I wish he produced an album for a rapper like Don or Baby. They'd go so hard on his beats. Yeah, man. Absolutely. I think it falls right there. Gene Dawson, Chaos Now. Again, another eight. This was a really, really solid year for music, dude. I'm telling you. It's an eight and I really, really like the production. A tier, easy. Gene Dawson went ballistic on this one. Great album, extremely solid, through and through, cover to cover. The consistency, the catchiness, the quality of the production, some of the folk songs that he added towards the end that really caught me off guard and were a, a really extremely welcome and pleasant surprise. Keep an eye out for Gene Dawson as well. Being Funny in a Foreign Language was my album of the year the first time I heard it. Absolutely. Uh, S tier for me personally. S tier and in terms of replayability higher than Jid's album for me. Obviously it's not a rap album. This is by the 1975. But again, in terms of lyricism, production value, catchiness, you know, how often I want to come back and listen to it. Just the, the really fun, energetic dance track vibes. I mean, we basically got Robbers Part 2 on this one. This is sentimental and nostalgic and emotional for me. Uh, they're, they're one of my favorite bands, at least top three. Absolutely fantastic album. It's an S tier album for me. Intro track when he said, I think I got a boner, but I can't really tell. I'm in love with you, I, 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 I. Come on, man, that's that, that bubblegum pop is gonna get stuck in your head for three weeks. It's a really good album, really good album. Quadeca, I didn't mean to haunt you. This year was so sensational. There is not a single album left that is below a six. There's not a single album left that is below a six. There are no zeros on this list um, at first glance. Once all the albums are in the tier list, we'll reorganize them and we'll decide if there's anything there. But I didn't mean to haunt you. Definitely S tier. Bef I mean, before we say anything else, it's S tier. Best concept of the year. Absolutely. Quadeca's lyricism on that, com talking from the point of view of somebody who has died, was extremely impressive. The fact that it's all produced by him 
and as well produced as it is, is insane. The fact that he did all of it really himself, it's like unspeakable. It's, it's, it's really leaves me speechless. It's, um, it's an S tier album. It's a 10 out of 10. And, uh, you know, props to Quedeca, props to everything that, that he, he worked so hard to achieve, props on his, you know, dramatic evolution as a, as a musician, as an artist. Ethereal haunting production, great lyrics and concept. What else can you ask for? Very, very good. These words don't do you justice. Yeah, it really does. It's one of those albums that leaves you speechless. It's S tier. Where does it land in S tier though? It's not better than Jid. And Wet Tennis is just too polished. It's an S tier album. It's still a 10. All these albums are 10s, but I'm gonna leave it right there. Renaissance, Beyonce. Obviously was not made for my demographic, first of all. But there are some really standout songs off of there. Some great dance tracks. I don't listen to a whole lot of dance music, but there are some really great dance tracks. Some really great vibes off of this one. I mean, Beyonce's vocal abilities are, are <laughs> second to none, really. It's an A tier album. I'm thinking it's like a, an eight though, seven or an eight. In terms of how often I wanna to listen to it though, because I don't really come back to dance all that much, I'm gonna leave it right there. I would listen to Wasteland before I listen to Renaissance, and I have been, eight sex location. Mm, when I listen to Fish, I don't know, actually. That's better, that's where Beyonce lands. I think it's so much better to rate albums when you're actually looking at the tier in front of you. You can actually see where, where each album stacks up against each other. Alex Cameron, Oxy Music. I think the first time I, I listened to it, I gave it like a seven. It was another one of those B. Wells requests, just like In I Have Been. B. Wells has never missed with a request. It's an A-tier album. I don't think it's an eight, personally. I think I'm, I'm willing to put it right there. Um, it's an enjoyable listen. You know, it's not rap or anything like that. It's, it's, it's a little bit of a different vibe from that. Some acoustic, sometimes folky, kind of like alternative sung music about drugs. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> I remember it being kind of short too, and, and yet he was able to say a lot in that short amount of time. Oxy music, definitely worth a listen. It's not mind blowing. It's not gonna be album of the year. It's not gonna, you know, open your third eye or anything, but it is worth your time. Soul sold separately, Freddie Gibbs. Anything about drugs is great. Freddie Gibbs. I remember giving this one kind of an eight too. High A tier, yeah. It's not a 10. It's definitely not better than Denzel Curry. That looks right to me, that feels right. Soul Sold Separately, just below Kendrick Lamar's album. A tier, I mean, some of Freddie Gibbs, actually Freddie Gibbs kind of breaking out into the mainstream sound a little bit, making some catchy hooks, doing a little bit of singing, doing a little bit of, um, you know, experimenting there in terms of his, how he approaches the songs, doing the hooks himself. Um, Too Much is a banger. I love it, I love how catchy it is. There's some really interesting tracks on there. Definitely worth your listen as well if you haven't checked it out. Cover art is okay. Not one of my favorite covers of the year, and I do really care about that shit, but it's a great album. Smithereens by Joji. A little disappointing, honestly. The reaction isn't out yet at the time of this recording. It's only on Patreon, but by the time you're watching this, it'll probably be out. You can check out my thoughts on that. Uh, I was expecting more from it. I appreciate how short it is, but it doesn't really feel very inspired. It doesn't really feel, uh, at times, like Joji was, was really wanting to make it. I remember someone saying during the actual reaction that there, there were a lot of writers um, on this one in comparison to some of his older albums and so it doesn't really feel like Joji at some times. It doesn't really feel very personal and authentic. It really feels like being sad for the sake of sounding sad, you know, on, on some of the songs. That said, there are some standout tracks on there, but I don't think, it's not an album that I would never come back to, but it was definitely not a, an A tier project. I'm thinking, I'm thinking somewhere around there. Uh, it's cool. It's cool, but for Joji, it's mid. The chorus to Too Much is great, yeah. Yeah, Joji has been on a little bit of a decline too. I mean, there's no, the, the best song on Smithereens is a Glimpse of Us, and that was the single, you know? So everything that we heard on the album after Glimpse of Us, which is also the first song, was a disappointing, uh, was, a, was, was disappointing to listen to, so, you know. Uh, and In the Dark, Hearts Aglow by Wise Blood. Very spiritual, very moody, kind of dark, uh, alternative folk with extremely warm, embracing vocals. They really feel like a hug. Um, they feel like putting on, you know, a warm sweater on a snowy day, the, their vocals are just so touching and, and almost almost the way it, it, it sounds is like, like a very caring, very loving, very special album, absolutely. It's an experience, you're gonna wanna sit down in the dark, listen to this one cover to cover, absolutely. 
Uh, not a not an album that has you know a hit single on it that you're going to come back to very frequently. This is one of those ones that similarly to um, uh, to Pimp a Butterfly for me personally, or um, even in some aspects, Mr. Morale. It's one of those ones that you just if you're playing it, you got to play it all the way through. You know what I mean? It's it's it, it, and listening to any single song off of it is good, but it's it's to that song's detriment that you don't listen to it in the context of the entire album as a whole. It's a great experience, it's a wonderful album. I actually wanna put it here, just after Wasteland. Above Benjamin Clementine, it's an eight, eight and a half. I had a blast listening to it, and it, I mean, B. Wells asked me to listen to it at the very tail end of the year, so it's fresh in my mind, and uh, I just I had a, a great time listening to it. That video is probably out at this point that you're watching this video as well. It's just one of those videos where I, I say almost nothing. I'm just hypnotized and kind of speechless by it the entire time. We should do a cover tier list where the Discord sends their top three favorite cover arts and we rank them. That's a great idea. I would love to do that. I love cover art. I mean, honestly, need I, you know, need I say more? Need I say more? There is no rap album that came out this year, actually, there's no rap album that came out this year that's better than Little Sims. Her pen is untouchable right now. She's really probably the best UK rapper out there right now. I, I, I'll say that pretty confidently. Um, I mean, she's one of the best rappers out in the world. She's really slept on. She's really underrated. And it's, it's an S tier album for me because it's not as great as Sometimes I Might Be Introvert. Um, hell, if, if Sometimes I Might Be Introvert came out this year, it would be my album of the year. Um, I heard it this year and I'm, I'm really mad that it came out last year, so I can't give it album of the year. Although No Thank You is not as great as Sometimes I Might Be Introvert, uh, it, it, it feels almost like a continuation of that, of some of the themes, some of the ideas. I mean, she's still just as lethal in her songwriting. Uh, the way she puts her thoughts to paper and, and how they relate, how relatable they are to me at sometimes is just like, I wish I was able to write the way she does. She is an inspiration. The way she uses orchestral arrangements in her production is brilliant. I mean, she, you know, is just a beast. She's really masterful. Um, and she's just, a, a, she's a monster. She's a monster. You gotta look out for Little Sims. Can't believe I missed the Little Sims reaction. It's, you know, you, you, you gotta turn on the notifications and you gotta, you gotta, you gotta commit to my channel. You gotta be here 24 seven, just in case I go live. TM, <laughs> it's okay, Mixo, it's okay. Mixo, you're a patron. You could literally watch it now. It's, it's out on Patreon. <laughs> TM is better than the family but it is also painfully mid. It was a sad, it, 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 Brockhampton really went out sad. It's a shame that it's their last album. I would have preferred that Roadrunner be their last album. This album doesn't feel like Brockhampton. It feels kind of like a shell of what Brockhampton used to be. Watching it on Patreon isn't the same. Don't say that shit, then no one's gonna go on Patreon, bro. <laughs> uh, no, I get what you mean. You can't, you can't be in the chat. You can't, you know, you're not there live in the moment when you're watching it on Patreon. Um, yeah, no, it, it, although it's better than The Family because we actually get participation from some of the other Brockhampton members, this album is so painful to listen to, um, being a Brockhampton fan. I mean, how do you have your last album and you don't even put Bareface on it? You know what I mean? It's really, really tough. I was extremely disappointed by it. Despite it being better than the family, I can't see myself ever coming back to it. Brockhampton is just really sad to see them go out like that. I think I mentioned at one point in the reaction that they went out with a whimper. They could have gone out with a bang and they really went out with a quiet whimper. So that's unfortunate. Pink Hearts, Sofago. It's a little too long. There's a little bit of bloat on there, but it wasn't nearly as tiring or repetitive to listen to as I thought it was gonna be. So Fago absolutely has access to some very, very talented producers now that he's signed to Cactus Jack. And I would love to see him make use of those producers to try and make something different outside his comfort zone in the future. We're talking about a very young artist who still has his whole career ahead of him uh, and massive potential, great vocal abilities, very creative in the way that he uses the background vocals and the way that he um, performs his music and utilizes the, the tools at his disposal to make his voice sound the way he wants it to sound. But I would love to hear him over some different sounding beats, some different genres, explore that a little bit. It wasn't as disappointing as I was expecting it to be. It is B tier, but I would come back to it before I ever came back to Smithereens. I'm giving it a six. And SZA, SOS. 
A lot of you guys missed the scissor reaction as well. I listened to it as soon as it dropped. It actually dropped two hours before it dropped in the US here in Brazil. Best R&B album of the year. Absolutely. 23 songs. She goes 23 for three, in my opinion, which is very, very difficult. You guys know how much I love my shorter albums. She's two for two in terms of her albums. Despite the reaction to her album giving me my first YouTube strike. That's my album of the year. SZA absolutely murdered it. She killed every song. I loved the experience of sitting down and listening to this album as soon as it dropped. I think her vocal abilities, her delivery, the songwriting, production choices, it doesn't get boring. She goes outside her comfort zone. She experiments a little bit. She absolutely killed it. I loved it. My wife and I have been listening to it on a loop as well since it dropped. I think it's a great follower to control. That's my album of the year. Now that I have all the albums placed in the tier, in the tiers, let me take a look at it, see how it feels, see if I'm rearranging anything. You would remove Quadeca from S tier. Uh, I... I guess if it's here, it has to be better than Denzel and Don FM. And is it? It is not. That's where Quadeca goes, I think. Above Kendrick, below JPEG Mafia. It's only above Kendrick, not objectively, subjectively, because Kendrick was a little bit of a letdown for me. I was expecting better from it. Despite it being really good, I was expecting better. Whereas Quadeca was um, just awesome through and through. I guess since I had no expectations for Quadeca's album, you know, that kind of influences uh, how I think it, about it in a po more positive light than Mr. Morrell. I think S tier is right now. Everything included, including replayability, catchiness, personal preference for the production styles. I think S tier is correct. A tier. Don FM, top of the top of A tier, absolutely. Uh, nothing changes my mind about that. Denzel Curry, for sure, deserves to be at least top three. Mm, yeah, no, Metro's album is not better than Denzel's. Top four is looking good. I like Quadeca here. Mr. Morale, better than Soul Sold Separately. Is Soul Sold Separately better than Palaces? I would rather listen to Palaces. I have more fun listening to Palaces. Gunna's a whole lot of fun to listen to as well, though. I have more fun listening to the Gunna album as well. This is good, though. Soul Sold Separately and then Chaos Now and then it's almost dry. That's good. Wasteland and In the Dark Hearts Aglow. How do I feel about that order? I feel good about it. I feel good about this. Ari Lennox over Beyonce. No. Ari Lennox over Montel Fish. We hit a lot of eights. Light, decent, and strong eights this year. Um, right now what I'm doing is I'm looking at the two albums that are next to each other and I'm comparing which one I would actually want to come back to beforehand. You know what I mean? So I would rather come back to The Weeknd before Denzel, but I'd come back to Denzel before Metro. And I would come back to Metro before this EP, but I would come back to JPEG Mafia before Quedeca, etc. And I'm going down the list. The Future record was bloated. I agree it was bloated, but it feels weird seeing Future and Smithereens, you know, in the same category. Although, Oxy Music had no bloat. I think I'm overrating some of these albums. I think I'm overrating them. I think Future was right to be down here at six. Top of B. No YB albums in valid list. <laughs> I think I'm overrating some of these. Um, that looks better, I think. Mm. Mm -mm. I'm not coming back to Smithereens. I'm only coming back to Glimpse of Us, really, at the end of the day. Am I coming back to 070 Shake? Probably not. Beyond those few tracks that I enjoyed. Post Malone had a couple cuts on there where he sounded really rock star-like and sad and depressed and raw. And I, I, I enjoy those. I really only like 
major distribution off of her loss. Uh, pink Hearts over, honestly, never mind. No, Pink Hearts was... Pink Hearts was not as replayable as that. That's gonna get me in trouble for saying Sofago is better than Yeet. I think I'm good. I think this is it. I think this is my tier list for the, uh, for the uh, you know, main albums, mainstream, I guess, albums or, or larger artist albums that I heard this year. SOS by SZA, an S tier. Being funny in a foreign language, the 1975. No Thank You by Little Sims. The Forever Story by Jid. Wet Tennis by Sophie Tucker. Top of the tier, we have Don FM by The Weeknd. We have Melt My Eyes, See Your Future by Denzel Curry. Heroes and Villains by Metro Boomin. Offline EP by JPEG Mafia. I Didn't Mean to Haunt You by Quedeca. Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers by Kendrick Lamar. Palaces by Flume. DS Forever by Gunna. Soul Sold Separately by Freddie Gibbs. Chaos Now by Gene Dawson. It's Almost Dry by Pusha T. Wasteland by Brent Fayez. And In the Dark Hearts Aglow by Wise Blood. And I Have Been by uh, Benjamin Clementine. Renaissance by Beyonce. Demons Protected by Angels, Nav. Age Sex Location by Ari Lennox. Jamie by Montel Fish. Oxy Music by Alex Cameron. I Never Liked You by Future, Honestly Never Mind by Drake, Pink Hearts by Sofago, Life by Yeet, 12 Carat Toothache by Post Malone, Her Loss by Drake featuring 21 sometimes, You Can't Kill Me by 070 Shake, Smithereens by Joji, TM and The Family, both by Brockhampton, and at the bottom of the list, No Stylist by Destroy Lonely. That's my personal tier list for this year. Metro carries this year in terms of trap. I think Metro had the trap album of the year. Yes, you're right. SZA album goaded, absolutely. Honestly, never mind. gotta be F tier, Shit's Dog. Drake, Her Loss, pretty good. Uh, I actually came back to Honestly, never mind more than I did Her Loss. Honestly, never mind has some pretty, pretty nine, mind numbing background music cuts on there that I enjoyed a little bit. Pretty W list. Yeah, this one's my personal one. That is my album of the year tier list for this year, my personal one. Like I said, I will do one with the Discord where we all decide where all these albums really should fall. So with that said, I'm gonna end the video right here. I'm gonna keep streaming though, so don't go anywhere. Follow me on Twitch. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel. I hope you guys all have a great uh, end of the year, you know, holiday season. Uh, hope you guys stay safe. Enjoy the season with your loved ones. Everybody, thank you so much for watching, for all the support you've shown for the channel. I appreciate you guys. Everyone stay safe. And as always, peace out.